Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about a fantasy action film called Along with the Gods. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. Somewhere in the population center of Korea, a large building is burning in flames while a firefighter named Han jumps out from the building, trying to save a civilian's life. His robe is burned by the raging heat, causing him to fall quickly onto the ground without landing on the safety cushion. His entire life flashes before his eyes, but surprisingly, the man is able to wake up after saving the little girl from being killed. He gets up and rushes towards the girl's family, trying to see if the victim is hurt, but no matter how hard he talks, no one seems to be responding. Suddenly, he hears a voice calling his name from afar, and sees two people in suits smiling towards him amidst the chaos. Han tries telling them to step away from the falling debris, but soon notices the firefighters trying to save a man who looks exactly like the main character himself. The woman named Chun tells Han that he's a paragon before he died, and they're here to assist him through the seven trials of judgments. The other guardian called Mac tells him that their leader is waiting for them before the gates towards the trials, and they have to go there right now. Hong has trouble taking all this information in, and slowly walks away while looking at his comrades mourning over his dead body. He screams that he can't die right now as he wants to see his mother, but the man's body began levitating in the air towards the giant portal. Han continues shouting about seeing his mother, while the guardians are touched that he's so caring towards his parent even after death. They arrive in a different dimension where thousands of people are heading towards the gates of judgment, and Han meets the guardian leader called Rim, who's helped 47 souls to reincarnate in the past century. When the leader congratulates Han for being a paragon, the man looks away and declines, stating that he's not a good person at all. They enter through the gates of judgment, but are teleported to a nightmarish place full of lava called the Mountain of Murder. Mac is shocked to see their location and immediately questions Han if he's killed someone in his life, but the man denies having ever done something so terrible. Rim explains that causing someone's death indirectly through inaction is also judged by the trials, which may be the reason why they're here. Han arrives on a stadium where large doors on the ground opens up, revealing a giant pit filled with lava. The people who are punished try desperately to climb out, but they continuously burn inside the sea of flames. The prosecutors begin the trial by accusing Han of not saving one of his colleagues when he had the chance to do so, which eventually led to the man's death. They demand that Han suffers inside the lava pit for five years in order to atone the sin of not saving his friend. Rim defends the man by requesting to closer examine on what really happened at the incident. Apparently, Han did try to desperately save his friend at the scene, but they couldn't move the stone that the firefighter was trapped under. After realizing the hopeless situation, his colleague told him to leave and save the other civilians instead. Because of Han's decision, he was able to save 8 people that night. Rim argues that the man's heroism should be taken into consideration when judging his decision to leave his friend behind. Seeing the man's bravery at helping others, the judge decides to exonerate him from the charges and allow him to pass on to the next trials. Although Han has won the first hearing, he's greatly affected by the reminder of his colleague's death. He demands to know why the Guardians are helping him, as he doesn't believe himself to be a paragon. It turns out that the Guardians have their own agendas, as they made a deal with the King of Hell who's called Yomura. If the three are able to help 49 souls to go through the trials and reincarnate within the century, they can also become human humans as well. They eventually arrive at the trial of indolence, where Chun explains all the labors that Han has completed. The man has never been lazy throughout his life, and always helped others no matter where he went. This even means knocking over a beehive and subjecting his whole team to terrible stings, or rescuing some grumpy cat on the edge of a building, and breaking the owner's Lamborghini with his head. The judge was so moved by Han's contributions that she orders the prosecutors to immediately build a statue in honor of the Paragon. However, when she inquires about why the man wanted to live his life so fully, Han replied that the reason was simply for money. Upon hearing the man's answer, the judge quickly changes her verdict and tells the prosecutors to send Han into the punishment, where a giant machine chases after all the people guilty of indolence, crushing their bones and feeding them to the fishes. The guardians try their best to help their defendant, and begs the goddess to look closer at the man's life. The reason Han worked so hard to make money was because he wanted to support his mother who was sick, and his brother who wanted to go to law school. Han worked so hard that he often disregarded his own health, and his desire for money is therefore not due to selfishness. After realizing the man's true motivations, the goddess finds that Han is not guilty as he only wanted to help his family. 
The group quickly boards the boat that will take them to the next location, but before they can celebrate, they notice that they're being pursued by numerous monsters. The team unleashes their weapons and tries their best to defend against the creatures. They're able to defeat many of the enemies by cutting them into pieces, but the captain eventually gets knocked over the ship and barely hangs on. Mac is forced to defend the ship all by himself while giving his leader the chance to recover. In the final moment, Mac strikes a large stone pillar that causes the rocks to fall, finally saving them from the monster's pursuit. The man explains that this can only happen because the family of Han has died and became a vengeful spirit. In order to stop other monsters from pursuing them in the future, Rim decides to visit Han's family in order to find out the truth about what happened. He goes to Han's residence and notices that the mother is clearly alive. This can only mean that it was the brother Su who died and turned into a vengeful spirit. The evil aura tries to run away while the guardian chases closely behind. Rim tries to stop the spirit by catching and using his weapon, but the ghost manages to avoid the attacks from behind. The two eventually clashes together and knocks the guardian away, allowing the spirit to disappear as Rim looks desperately for his prey. The guardian follows the trail to a military base where he noticed the soldiers talking about Su and referring to him as a deserter. What's even more curious is that the captain and one of his fellow soldiers is clearly hiding something. Rim disguises as a colonel of the army and proceeds to question the captain about Su, accusing him of killing the man. Surprisingly, the captain begins blackmailing the guardian out of fear, which further confirms that he's responsible for the brother's death. On the other side, Han is being questioned by the goddess of deceit and accused of writing numerous false wills and testaments for his colleague, which he failed to save earlier. He gave these writings to the man's daughter, lying to her by pretending to be the girl's father. The goddess immediately orders the man to be tied up and prepares to punish him by cutting off his tongue. Luckily, Rim is able to connect to his team through telepathy and argues for Han's actions. It turns out that he also wrote false letters to his mother, lying about how great his life is and how wealthy he became. Rim argues that these are all attempts to comfort the people that he cares about by providing them hope that reality can offer and allowing them to live on. Upon realizing that Han did all this in order to provide others a reason to live on, the deity forgives the man's crimes as the intentions were never to harm. After the trial, Rim lies to Han and tells him that his families are doing fine, but quickly informs the team about the truth regarding Han's brother. Rim goes back in time to see what really happened on the night of Su's death and realizes that his comrade Don shot the man by accident after switching off the safety. Don called their captain right away, and instead of trying to save the dying man, the soldier decides to bury Su and hide the evidence so that his promotion would not be soiled. Rim looks at the body of Su and realizes in shock that the man was actually not dead, forcing him to remember the memories from his past where his father was also buried alive. At the same time, Han has arrived in the hell of injustice where the people are frozen for years in order to pay for their crime of not helping others. Thankfully, Han's profession as a firefighter means that he'll not be judged here, but instead be allowed to move on to the next location. During the ride inside the cable car, it's revealed that the Guardians all have their memories erased except for their leader, Rim. Mac tries to stop his teammate from revealing any more about their limitations, but accidentally informs Han that his brother is in fact the vengeful spirit. Upon realizing the truth, the man's unstable psyche shakes the entire realm and breaks the cable car, nearly dropping his Guardians below. But Han Han is able to pull himself together in the last moment and offers to help his teammates. The three eventually arrives in the hell of betrayal, where a beautiful goddess judges the people who betray their loved ones by trapping them in a mirror and shattering the victims. Luckily, Han was a paragon in his lifetime and did not betray anyone, allowing him to move on safely from this location as well. At the same time, Rim is able to find the vengeful spirit in the nightclub where he's trying to kill one of the soldiers who buried him alive. The Guardian chases after Su right away, and they fight continuously in the air while flying through the city. Rim is able to capture the spirit by setting a trap and tying him onto the building using a magical rope. The Guardian tells the spirit that he needs to forgive his killers in order to be reborn or else he'll be destroyed forever. But this only served to remind Su about how he was buried alive and betrayed by his best friends, causing causing him to scream in rage and break free by creating a massive shockwave. On the other side, after drinking numerous amounts of alcohol, Dong has decided to give the location of the body to Su's mother, unable to bear off the guilt any longer. The woman opens the map and finally sees the location of his youngest son, while Su watches everything from behind his mother. 
The vengeful spirit goes to Rim and tells the Guardian that he has decided to forgive Dawn after seeing the soldier's guilt and how the location of the body was given to the mother. Sue begs the Guardian to act like a medium so that he may talk to Dawn for the last time, promising that he'll go through the trials afterwards. The spirit talks through the man and tells the soldier that he forgives him and to not waste any more new tears on something from the past. Meanwhile, Hong has reached the hell of violence and sees a giant hole in which he must jump in in order to reach the trials. The man falls into the massive opening and crashes into a giant rock, but Mac is able to catch his teammate and land beside Han. However, Han slides towards the two and knocks them over by accident, causing them to free fall once again towards the bottom of the pit. Mac rushes towards the two while Han is able to grab the girl and tries to save her from the crash just like before he died. Surprisingly, their fall is quickly stopped at the last moment after reaching the bottom. The trial of violence begins and the prosecutors accuse Han of beating up his brother in high school. This action was especially unforgivable as the young boy was suffering from malnutrition due to how poor the family was at the time. In fact, Han never sought out forgiveness after the fight as he ran off away from his family the very next day and never went home ever since. The judge decides quickly that the man is guilty of violence towards his own family and plans to send him into a pit where people are constantly hit by rocks as punishment. Seeing that Han is about to be sentenced, Chun quickly demands the judge to hold off the conviction and look at the final trial together with the current one as they are closely related. This play is very risky as it requires the Guardians to forfeit their powers in the afterlife if Han was found to be guilty on the next trial. Unfortunately, the Guardians quickly learn the truth about what happened on that night of the fight. Su woke up after seeing his brother kneeling before their mom and demands to know what Han was doing, but soon finds out that the boy was trying to kill his own mother using a pillow. Su tried to stop his brother immediately, which caused Han to eventually drop the pillow and begin punching the young boy continuously with anger. It turns out that Han felt very hopeless at the time of his life as their family was so poor and his mother was gravely ill. The only way he believed that can end their suffering was through death and nothing else. This is also why he felt extremely guilty afterwards and ran away from home, never returning to his family ever again. After hearing this, the Guardians become hopeless as they realize that there is no way they can win the trials now, especially in the final hell of filial impiety. At the same time, Rim is trying to bring Su towards his body so that the spirit can finally begin the journey towards reincarnation as well. When they arrive at the military camp, Su is surprised to see that his mother is here, begging the soldiers to bring her to her son's body. The captain of the army sees this and rushes towards the woman, ripping her sides into pieces and pushing her onto the ground, causing her to faint in the exertion. Su sees that his mother is being attacked by his killer and becomes engulfed in rage, quickly turning into the vengeful spirit that he was before. He breaks free from the restraints and grabs onto the Guardian, throwing the man away using tremendous force. Su's fury becomes so intense that he turns into a giant tornado, engulfing all the soldiers in the area and opening a gateway towards the afterlife itself. The vengeful spirit tosses everything around and creating massive chaos while Rim tries desperately to save all the people from being killed. Luckily, Mac is able to charge into the living world through the portal and launches at Su, breaking away the giant statue and stunning the enemy. Me. Rim takes the chance and charges in as well, capturing Sue using a magical rope and finally putting a stop to the rampage. Meanwhile, the trial of Han begins at the other end as King Yomra himself decides to be the judge for the case. The deity charges the man with attempting to murder his own mother and beating his brother in such a desperate time. The king also reveals that Han's mother actually knew about her son's attempt to kill her, but remained silent and kept all this tragedy inside her heart which makes the man's crime even worse. The deity concludes that Han will be punished forever in this hell as he tried to commit the worst thing possible of killing the one who gave him life. Suddenly, the entire realm begins shaking as a voice begins speaking to Han's mother. It turns out that Rim has used his power to allow Su to speak to his mother in a dream, and the son apologizes for his brother. Su tells the woman that Han has worked non-stop for 15 years in order to support them ever since that night after feeling guilty for what he did. Surprisingly, the mother reveals that she has forgiven her son a long time ago and apologizes herself for not being able to provide for her children. Han hears this and falls into tears, while the king himself has been moved by their display of family. The deity decides that he can no longer charge Han for his crimes as the victim has forgave him a long time ago, thus allowing the man to be reincarnated. Han hears this and bows towards Chu, thanking the guardians for helping him through the journey, before disappearing into the bright lights. Back in the mortal 
Mortal Realm, Rim has decided to bring Su as their 49th reincarnation, planning to achieve their deal for the king so that they can be reborn as well. The group arrives inside the hell of filial impiety in front of numerous demons and charges towards the enemies in order to open a way to the king of hell himself. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.